view it full screen. And it'll show the contact at the top with an option to pull up its contact card. In this case here, this is from a source that's not in my, my corporate exchange directory. And it's not in my address book, so it's going to show no match found. We'll go back. And of course, you got options here on that menu. HTC's done a great job of skinning the menu with some kinetic scrolling, your usual email responses. We'll close, and in this case here, we'll actually delete the message. And here's some info about the University of Kansas. Now this actually should be in my corporate exchange directory. So it'll search, and it didn't find it. We'll tap to go back. And again, you have to use the on-screen OK to hit the OK, or use the arrow button to go back. But if I flip through, if I flip through here and I press the button, I can pull up the contact here, and it'll show email, title, and pulls all this off the corporate exchange server, uh, as well as anything that might possibly be found uh, in my app. Looking, looking at the address tab, under, looking at the address tab, under, under people, you've got the option to be able to have a few favorite contacts that you can just scroll right down the side. And it'll show their profile pic and a nice yule and a nice beautiful card flip. I've only got a couple set, and you can see how that very nicely scans through. And so that's the people. But now at the bottom of the people here, you've got the option here you can make a phone call call home, send a text message, send an email, or if I click on the picture, it'll open the contact, and then I can scroll through all the information that's been set. In this contact, there's no picture, but now when I use the TouchFlow 3D slider, I can see the contact details, text messages I can't communicate it with this contact, an email with the contact, updates and events. If they've used Facebook, it'll show their Facebook status, as well as any events that they're supposed to go to in your Outlook calendar, and your call history. All is very neatly tucked away and integrated away. And so here if I go and I look at the messages, I can see with this contact here, I've got a few contacts with them. And it's got this beautifully skinned SMS interface here. If you tap on the send box, you can come up here. And a very iPhone styled keyboard, you can compose your own text message. We're, of course, going to cancel that. under photos and videos. Same thing. You can sit here and flip your contacts. Or we could put it down and use the flip up screen and see how that works in the horizontal. And continue to flip through.
or if we go to the album, it's a little more clear. If we click on this picture, it goes full screen. Very nice and kinetic. And of course, since this is a resistive screen, your iPhone gestures do not work to enlarge or shrink. And neither does your, your however, your zoom bar does work. See here, we can zoom in on this picture a little bit or zoom out. You can zoom around, view your picture. And now we'll exit the photo application, go over to settings. And now here is where you actually silence the phone rather than from up here. Look at your sound tab, and you got the option here to click on silent or normal. And you can see how it dynamically changes the volume information, options for events. You can set your ringtone. You can also do ringtones individually. I've got a custom MP3 ringtone set here already. You can also get deeper if you go to the All Settings tab. It's one of the few ways you can get out into the, gen into the genuine Windows mobile experience. You can see your traditional screen here. Now it's interesting device, you got options to update your PRL, update your profile, as well as a firmware update. All uh, over-the-air updates provided by Sprint. Touch flow option, you can adjust your tabs. People have been asking about TV out. That's definitely still here. If we, click the, if we press on it, it'll say warning, TV out cable. An optional accessory is needed to be able to output to an external display. Okay, can't use it, but that's okay. Connect to external GPS. Interesting, buried in here in the G sensor option is it gives you this very nifty level that you can use the, uh, as a leveling app. I've seen similar apps for the iPhone. Built in here, just don't press the calibrate button here. You're supposed to calibrate your, your G sensor when the phone's on a level playing field, but you can easily use this just as a, genu as a general level regardless. Nice little hidden app neatly tucked away, very eloquently done by HTC. Of course, other similar apps here. The security set here is your phone is SIM unlocked, but of course that's not gonna work with an AT&T or T-Mobile SIM card. You're gonna have to uh, be overseas um, or insert something like a Vodafone SIM card. Of course, many of your standard options are all here. Your stocks tab, if you update, nice little flip action. Same with the weather. You can see here, set the rain. Now, one little thing with the weather is that it has a fixed database of cities and you can't set your own. I don't actually live in Topeka, Kansas. The city in Kansas I live in is not available, but Topeka is the nearest city. So I'm gonna to have to sit with Topeka or uh, read through the hacks on XDA developers to be able to come up with the means to be able to actually insert my city into the database here. You got Sprint, you go over to Sprint Navigation. Maps, direction, search, drive to, 